All right, well, is it me or ahead of this whole fiscal cliff thing? Are they showing a hell of a lot more creativity, finding ways to raise taxes than simply cut spending? Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto, and this is getting a little ridiculous. Union members descending on Capitol Hill today to lobby lawmakers to keep their mitts off entitlements. They needn't worry because entitlements appear to be pretty much off the table as things stand. What is on the table? Taxes, and lots of them. And man, are they being very creative on that front. Now talk of a higher gas tax to fund construction projects. A move to limit the mortgage interest deduction for wealthier filers, maybe others. Still another to slash all deductions and exemptions. And by the way, not just for the rich, even slightly adjusting the mortgage formula, for example, likely zeroes in on those taxpayers well below the $250,000 threshold, or more like a hundred grand crowd now. Higher Medicare taxes to fund Medicare, but not a single word about maybe curtailing the overall growth of Medicare, a health care surtax on the rich to cover a program whose costs are already spiraling, but not much talk about the underlying abuses that are making a lot of those costs spiral. So you do see a pattern here. I don't care whether you're on the left or the right. The way we're going about this doesn't seem very fair. No creative solutions to cut spending, lots of creative ideas to raise revenue. That is where Washington shines, taking a shine to spending our money, even getting more of our money, but never, ever, ever simply saving us money. All right, we're going to uh, debate this uh, fair and balanced with wealth manager George uh, Jacassi says, if you want to look serious, you need to put big spending cuts on the table. Former George W. Bush advisor, D.D. Benke, agrees. And now we have, uh, well, I just call him my token liberal friend. <laughs> Actually, he's a very, very smart guy, liberal columnist, very accomplished executive, Rick Unger. Um, Rick, you're not buying any of this stuff. You don't see what I just laid out. Well, and I see some of it, but here's the problem. You know, you have to be careful not to create a new disaster by trying to solve another one. Look, in 1980, 83% of Americans had a defined pension benefit plan at work. Today, that's 15%. Less than 50% of Americans over 50 currently have any retirement benefit, 401k, anything but coming from But what does that work. have to do with at least Here's the what growth it, in, in, in these programs? Here's what it has to do with. If you're not careful in how you approach Social Security going forward, you're going to have a real disaster when these then people start retiring. Then put a number up on the table. Put a number up on the table. It's already a disaster. We're not, it's not even going to be there later. I mean, we might as well forget it. In our age group, forget it. There is going to be well, no your age group, so your we, party, I don't know, your league. What your, is your age group? Your, well, <laughs> hey, look, Mr. <laughs> um, I have ties older than her. But, Didi, your point is that Republicans are caving on these points and agreeing to a deal, at least to avoid the cliff, that will be largely tax hikes. Look, Washington is so wasteful now. We have got to cut, 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 and across the board. So for these unions to come in, flying in on the big jet, you know, they've already killed the Twinkie. They've killed, they're killing our Well, economy. to be fair, some of, them, no, some, of them some of them took jet blows. Some of them took jet blows. They didn't kill the Twinkie. When was the last time you ate one? Oh, never. And no, I'm not. Really? Your kids ate one. Well, but still, you're, you're, it's still, topic, we should still have a your point still, is union, what? Well, because the unions, I mean, this waste, 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 and it's all about them, so it's okay for them to be able to have all the entitlements, but everyone else, forget it. You know, that's well, not, not right. Just well, George, I'm not even here to debate, you know, entitlements or not what's fair, what's right. What I am saying is that we were supposed to have a balanced yes. approach to this with revenues and spending cuts. I'm seeing a great deal of creativity on ways to get money out of folks but not ways to save money for those folks. That's what alarms me. Let's say you. I left him completely stunned. <laughs> George, did you, did you hear that? No, oh, oh, I, didn't realize, I didn't realize you were at me. I have you know, that the, effect the on people, is, George. I do. Yeah, I have that, that effect on people. Go ahead. Yeah, you do. It's, it's overwhelming. Yes. But anyway, thanks for having me on. You know, the, the propaganda that has gone on for the spending, the spending, the spending, uh, and even the unions, I, I don't even know what the unions are doing on this issue. They need to get back uh, to representing uh, their members and, and reducing government regulation and other things that can make their companies more profitable overseas. But, but the, uh, to have it all talk about spending, you cannot tax more than the profits of our country. I mean, already we have spending, uh, our government of 25% of our GDP, it's going to rise to 33%. And, and we only got revenues of 19%. So there's a gap there. And, and when you think about it, let's just think about it in a business. Most businesses in America, if they make a 10% profit, that's okay. 15% profit's pretty good. 25 to 30% is a really good business. We're already spending 25% of our GDP. 
if we were a business, we'd be spending all of our profits already. Well, my, and, and I guess it comes it to back another... to this zeal to, to find ways to feed the beast the, than address the beast. And, and this is what I want to raise with you, Rick. It, the, the argument you hear from many Democrats, and, and even Harry Reid today, is that, you know, elections have consequences, and the consequence of this one is that America could support this, this effort. I don't think they voted for a lot more spending. I think you could make an argument that they did vote and, and were maybe, uh, you know, acquiesced to raising taxes on the wealthy, uh, agree or disagree. I think the president can lay claim to that, and maybe that happens. But it's disproportionate now. I, I think there's some truth to what you're saying, but let's let's be careful. I think careful. there's a lot of truth. Let's a be, lot of truth. Let's I be think careful it's all here. Truth. Wait, wait, wait. Let's See what be he careful. Says there's like a are, little truth. We are in the pregame analysis. This whole debate hasn't started. Does anybody sitting here? How do you think wait, it's going to be on the really, 31st? Do you really How do you believe? Think, what will the ratio be like? I'll answer in a second, but first let me ask my question. <laughs> Does anybody really believe we're going to get through this process without there being any spending cuts? Of course not. We are in the beginning phases of how this is going to turn out. Here's what's going to happen on December. 31st. We will have taken steps to resolve some of the tax issues. How that gets structured is going to have a lot to do with how we approach really approaching taxes next year. You are going to see some discussion, if not agreement, on cutting some spending, but it's basically going to be carried over. Here's what I'm worried time. about, and you and I can remember this. No. You weren't even born, but my point is this. Well, neither was I then. With, you're right. I, I forgot. <laughs> but George Bush Sr. famously had to renege on his uh, read my lips, no new taxes, was, because he had an agreement with Tip O'Neill at the time and, and Jim and Wright or the was, others, was and he was responsible. Wait a minute. With the idea was, I will raise taxes if you guys come back with spending cuts, he raised taxes. They didn't come back of course with not. the spending cuts. So are Republicans risking going down the same politically disastrous road? We have to cut. We have to cut a lot. I mean, there's so much waste. But we you're are open to like closing Greece. loopholes and that yes. sort of thing. That, that yeah. Grover Norquist says that's a tax hike. Well, Grover's wrong. Grover is so over. I mean, there's Another no one. reason. Well, Grover's there's no reason. No, look. I mean, uh, Members of Congress are allowed to make decisions. Why is he over if he's just trying to hold politicians accountable? Because it's not his job to, to do it. that. And, and I well, think that no, you know, I don't a think lot of people right. rip this guy it, a new one. I'll tell you because what. Because it makes us no, look no, no, strange. No, no, no. It so doesn't make good. you look strange. He's does. just holding politicians accountable to if you are, are going to close loopholes, if you're going to do the kind of thing that will, will, will raise tax the potential on folks. Cut somewhere else. What makes that such an outlandish view? Because it sounds strange for us to have this archaic pledge whenever we need to be working with Democrats. I'm not saying we cave. I'm just saying it sounds strange for having. Well, without this the agreement. pledge, without the pledge, it it, it 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 did a lot to curb a lot of nuts from going crazy. Well, that's true. But now, and we now look they like break nuts. the pledge. Say what you will of him, they go off the reservation and this get really wacky. Well, well, it just doesn't. Well, it does, smart. Well, well, now it is over. It just, no, it just doesn't Grover's sound over. right. I think we need to have a new approach to this. And, you know, thank you, Grover, for your time doing this. But I think people need to have individual responsibility and say, yeah. Well, you think you take that pledge. zeal away and it's, it's apparently now the politically correct thing to do to cut? No, or, not K, but we do need to cut across the board. George, you agree with that? that, that no, the, the, the no absolutely, absolutely not. It's every American's <laughs> job to hold every politician responsible up there. The only time we've balanced a budget in the last 17 years is when we had more revenues during the dot-com boom. It wasn't because of cutting spending. We have not been cutting spending. We've got we've got we've got Washington that is run amok. Yes. And I don't care if it's I don't care if it's Grover or me or you, but we have to hold Washington accountable. We cannot spend more than we make. Well, that's how very much percentage percentage Where is the zeal? Is where is the zeal for someone a, a Grover and Orcas on spending to come out and say sign a pledge not to increase it's, spending? Exactly. That's a great idea. We'll call it the Kabuto pledge. I love it. We don't that doesn't work. Rhyme. That we would don't be great. Need pledges. We need people that are <laughs> but elected they don't officials. Do it. They don't do it. We need their to be very we zealous don't about it. You don't like being held ways. to any standard or anything that I'm, will require okay you to, it, to do what you say. I don't mind that at all. I think constituents, constituents should be doing that. Republicans and Democrats alike have wildly made this government grow out of control. And, and if it's we take away right. a litmus test to try to rein it in, even if it is, as you folks say, as silly as a pledge, 
then you might as well take the, 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 the gates off the asylum and let the inmates well, then let's out. Not let's not elect Congress. Let's just send need, Grover to Washington. We need to have run a better message. You know what? We, we could do a hell of a lot worse. No, we could we really do a hell of a lot worse. Look we at really the Bunyan heads who are running the asylum now. Look, they seem to be firing on all cylinders. We need to have massive cuts. It needs to be radical. And this old, archaic way of doing things, I do think that we need to cut across the board. But I'm just saying we need a You have now become a liberal. Not at all. Not at all. I'm disgusted by your performance. You sat next to him for less than 30 seconds. No, I'm just saying we need a new and, and you've got a hammer and sickle no, on your forehead. No, we need a Kevin McCarthy, <laughs> Kathy McCorse, right. Rogers, Marco Rubio. We need new messengers. <laughs> new messengers, that's I, I want to thank you all.